What if I told you you could extinguish an electric vehicle fire with only the water you carry on your apparatus? <laughs> I don't believe it. It's absolutely possible. Let's discuss some of the options on how to make this happen. When you first arrive on scene and you realize you have an electric vehicle that's on fire, the first step is to knock down the fire. You have to understand what's on fire. If it's just the interior of that vehicle on fire or the exterior, the plastic parts, that high voltage battery is not involved in the fire, then it's a typical vehicle fire. You extinguish the fire inside that vehicle, it goes out a couple hundred gallons of water, everything's good. If the high voltage battery is involved, that's when it becomes a challenge for firefighters. And the level of difficulty there, that's based on a number of factors. The battery size makes a big difference. Do you have a small battery like in a hybrid vehicle? Or do you have a larger battery like something the size of a bus where there's multiple battery packs? Access to the battery. It really depends on what access you have to that battery because most of the time, those batteries are gonna be sealed up in that watertight fireproof box. It's gonna be very difficult to get water inside that battery box, if not impossible. Maybe that vehicle just hit a tree. Maybe it hit a wall. It stripped open the entire side of the vehicle. You've got great access to the inside of that battery. That could be a way where you flood the inside of that battery compartment with water and you're able to stop the fire very quickly. Now, is the vehicle near any exposures? That's another problem. Is the vehicle in a garage, for instance? Is it next to other cars? Is it next to a building, next to some type of structure? These can all be problems, especially if that high voltage battery is involved. If that's the case, the best situation is to get a tow company on the way, use a utility, a winch on a rescue, whatever you may have to drag that vehicle away from those types of exposures. At that point, take care of the exposures, let the vehicle burn. It's really unfortunate, but the best course of action for an electric vehicle, if that high voltage battery is on fire, just let it burn. Let it burn through the entire battery pack. You should be on scene for an hour, an hour and a half while that happens. Once it's burned through all the material inside that battery pack, a little bit of mop up, a couple hundred gallons of water, you'll be able to put the fire out. You'll be able to go back to your station. Unfortunately, if we're continually putting water on that electric vehicle with a high voltage battery burning, we'll likely be on scene for three, four, six hours, putting 30, 40, 60,000 gallons of water on that vehicle. It makes it very difficult. Now let's say you do try to fight this fire. You put lots and lots of water on the fire. You spend hours and hours on scene. Maybe you get the fire to stop burning inside that battery box. Well, think about this. You've got all these battery cells that are now in there. They're thermally damaged. You've got other electrical components, bus bars, things that are broken free from their initial connections. As soon as you move that vehicle, you've got a potential for that thermal runaway to kick up again. You get it on the tow truck, you start driving down the road, everything's bouncing around inside that vehicle. Again, another chance for that vehicle to catch on fire. Now it's sitting in the tow yard. A week, two weeks go by, it catches on fire again because you've got all that stranded energy stuck inside the battery box. Those are some of the reasons why it's really best just to let these vehicles burn. Now we're kind of screwed when it comes to public perception. On one hand, we sit there for an hour, hour and a half watching this vehicle burn. The public's gonna drive by and they're, they're gonna look at us and like, please do your jobs. On the other hand, you've got somebody in the public that goes to work in the morning. They see us fighting a vehicle fire, putting water on that vehicle. Then they're on their way home from work later that afternoon. We're still fighting that same fire. They're gonna say, that poor incompetent crew. That's where having a good PIO Get out in front of it, get somebody on the news, let the public know what's going on with these vehicles, let them know why you're not fighting the fire, the difficulties electric vehicles pose when they do catch on fire, and really educate the public on the issue. While right now we don't have a lot of options, UL Fire Safety and Research Institute is working towards understanding electric vehicle fires and trying to gather data and best practices on how to actually extinguish electric vehicle fires. Now this is a project that I'm going to be involved in and I'm looking forward to working with UL FSRI on this project. If you're interested in learning more, there'll be a link in the description below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll be providing updates as they become available.